Welcome to today's episode of Tech Teardown, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, where we look inside two interesting and similar electronics products and provide engineering insights into their components and design features. Electronics is an authorized distributor of electronic components from the world's leading manufacturers. Today we'll be comparing two different generations of dual band Wi-Fi routers, this Wi-Fi 5 router and a Wi-Fi 6 router. The Wi-Fi 5 router is the model E5400 from Linksys, while the Wi-Fi 6 router is the model AX3000 from TP-Link. Let's get started by seeing what's inside the boxes. So the Wi-Fi 5 router here from Linksys comes with a power supply, and a couple of antennas. Now let's open up this Wi-Fi 6 router. This one has four antennas rather than the two that we see for the Linksys. Let's get them plugged in. The most obvious difference is of course that the Wi-Fi 6 router is quite a bit larger and has two additional antennas. You may also notice that the Wi-Fi 6 router has LED status lights across the front whereas this Wi-Fi 5 router does not. Now let's take a look at the backs of these. <laughs> We can see they're quite similar. Both have five ethernet ports. One is for the wide area network and four for the local area networks. The Wi-Fi 6 router also has a USB 3.0 port. Now before we open them up to look inside, let's take a quick look at some key specifications. Naturally, this Wi-Fi 5 router supports the 802.11ac Wi-Fi 5 protocol, while the other supports 802.11ax for Wi-Fi 6. Both are dual band routers. That means they support communication at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. With Wi-Fi 6, you get an almost three times higher maximum data rate. We noted the four antennas, which is important for the radiation pattern beam forming capability in this Wi-Fi 6 router. The newer router also uses WPA3 for improved security. All of this increased capability means it consumes more power, two amps versus a half an amp. Now let's take a look inside to see how these products have been engineered. And we'll start with the Wi-Fi 5 router. We gotta open up the back here by peeling apart this label to get to some access screws. Before we open it up, you might notice the reset button here on the bottom, a little red reset button. Let's pry it open now. Now that we got the top off, you can see around this outside edge, it's pretty open, lots of gaps there to let heat out. And right in the middle, you see the big metal casing for EMI and heat. From each antenna, we have two wires that come to these miniature RF surface mount coaxial connectors here. We can actually pop those right off. Well, let's take a closer look at these antennas. All right, finally got that antenna casing off here. Let's take a closer look at the antenna itself. The coax cable feeds in near the middle of this antenna. So it's got a middle feed point here. This is a very flexible material for the antenna, and you should be able to see the RF pattern of the design right there. At the feed point, it is soldered on this side. I noted the surface mount push-in connectors before, but here we have an actual solder connection to the antenna. There's some markings here on the antenna. One of the ones you'll notice is it says 23 slash 28. Now you see that on a lot of electronic products. It's a date code, 23 meaning 2023, and 28 meaning the week it was manufactured. So it was manufactured the 28th week of 2023. And that's used for quality control in the manufacturing process. All right, I've got the second antenna out as well. And I kind of broke that one a little bit, but we do see that these antennas are identical. All right, now let's take a look back inside. At the back side here where we have the ethernet connections, we have a single housing for the four LAN ports and a separate connector housing for the WAN port. These provide the physical and electrical connections for the ethernet plugs on the back side. Then behind those port housings, we have these transformers. We've got two two port transformers. Those are for the four LAN ports and a separate one port transformer for the WAN. Then beginning over here where we have the barrel connector for power that comes in from the wall, we have the power section here highlighted by this big electrolytic capacitor. If you look over here in this corner, we have the flash memory. This is a Winbond 25Q128JVSQ 128 megabit serial flash. Right beside it, you see some access points. These are for programming the flash during production. 
All right, let's now remove the lid from this metal enclosure so we can take a closer look at the RF features and the Wi-Fi ICs that are inside. All right, now that we've got that lid off, you can see we've got two ICs here on the inside. They both have a thermal film here to carry heat from the IC up to the metal packaging. So the RF signals from the antenna come to the connectors down here. And then if you can see here, there's these small blue ICs that are mounted here. These are the RF switches. The signal from those go to each of these Wi-Fi ICs. Both of these Wi-Fi ICs are from MediaTek. The smaller one is for Wi-Fi 4. It supports a maximum 300 megabits per second data rate in the lower 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. The larger IC supports the full Wi-Fi 5 IEEE 802.11 AC standards. It's a dual band IC for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz RF, and its maximum data rate is 866 megabits per second. Both ICs have these 400 megahertz oscillators to provide primary chip timing. Let's flip this over and look at what's on the back of the PCB. We can see that reset button that we could see through the case before, and then there's really not much happening here on the back. We've got these four plastic tabs. These are for mounting the female ethernet connectors on the back. There are five metal tabs right through here that have been pushed through the PCB and then soldered to the backside. These provide both an electrical connection and improved mechanical stability for the ethernet connectors and the side-facing push button. Likewise, there are wide metal tabs over here for the barrel power connector. Again, those provide mechanical stability and electrical connection. Now we finish looking at the Wi-Fi 5 router. Let's turn our attention to the newer, more capable Wi-Fi 6 router. Again, we're gonna have to get access to the back of it here to get the screws. In this case, they're under these little rubber feet. So there's two screws there. Now that I got the screws off, I need to pry this open. I'm gonna need this X-Acto knife to cut open in here into the outer edge. And now after a lot of cutting all the way around all four sides, I think I can finally get this open now. Yep, there we go. All right, let's actually take a look at this section first. This is the front, this is our LEDs here. So you see the six LEDs. We flip it over, look inside, and we have this plastic piece. So this is an array of six LED light pipes. You can see that it's a 90 degree angle. These sit above the LEDs, which are in here, and they route the light from the LEDs up and out to the front of the case. So the six LEDs are down here. There's a black foam insulator that keeps the light from bleeding from one to the other. So it just sits right across it, the light comes up, and then out of the front of the case. One of the other things we would notice here is we mentioned at the beginning all the power consumption. Well, there's a lot of vent holes here on the top and then all around the bottom as well because there's a lot of heat here coming out of this device because it's more power hungry than the Wi-Fi 5. We also see this giant metal plate. Now, I don't know if you can tell on camera how thick this is, but that's a pretty beefy metal plate for carrying heat away from the PCB. All right, let's take a look at everything here on this PCB. Over here at the USB 3.0 device, we have some important tape to help hold it down. So you don't see that on every product, but it provides a little bit of extra stability for that USB port. Right down over here, we have two miniature RF connectors, similar to on the Wi-Fi 5. They go to the antennas. They go to the inside antennas here. And then on the outside of it, antennas, they route along here and they come over to this side and they are solder mounted. So it's very interesting that we've got two different types of antenna connections, solder for these outer ones and surface mount clip ones for the inner. Focusing down over here in this corner, you might see these little metal clips for holding the RF cables. And that allows them to be routed precisely through here and kind of avoid them moving around too much or getting too close where they might interfere with other things. Let's open up these antennas and see what's inside like we did before. So inside this antenna here, they've actually epoxied this in here. So I'm going to kind of break it open to see what the antenna looks like. Let's take off all the others as well. All right, let's take a quick focus at these antennas. Now, they're massively different. First thing you may notice is they're different colors. They're also different sizes. 
As you can clearly see, these have vastly different antenna designs, manufacturing technologies, and even substrate materials. Remember this Wi-Fi 6 router supports radiation pattern beam forming, which can target that RF energy towards the other RF devices connected to it, like your TV or your phone as you move around the room. This can improve the signal quality and the range. The green antenna uses a cost-effective alternative to the usual FR4 base material used in most PCBs. This kind of brownish-gray substrate is a low-loss PTFE woven glass high-frequency material. Both of them use a solder connection for the cable to the actual antenna. All right, let's start looking at what's inside this uh, PCB here. So working our way from the back again, like we did on the other one, the configuration is almost identical to the Wi-Fi 5 router. We've got a single connector for the WAN housing here, and then another one that does all four of the LAN ports. These provide the physical and electrical connections for the ethernet. Then again, behind these ports are the ethernet transformers for the ESD protection, circuit isolation, and signal transmission. Again, there are two two ports for the LAN and one one port for the WAN. Up in this corner of the PCB is a one gigabit NAND flash memory from ESMT. Similarly to the Wi-Fi 5 router, there appears to be a set of access pins right here that are likely used for programming during production manufacturing. Now we need to remove this big metal plate. All right, I've got the screws out and so we can get this heat sink off of here now. It's big and sturdy. Again, we've got some metal cases for EMI and heat transfer underneath here for the RF components. So let's get those off. Toward the middle of this board is the Realtek Ethernet switch with its fun crab logo. It supports full duplex 10, 100, 1000 connectivity. Right here is this very large IC. This is from Qualcomm. It's an internet processor. It has dual arm Cortex A53 CPUs. In the same metal case is another memory from ESMT. This is a four gigabit low voltage DDR3 synchronous DRAM. Finally, in the smaller metal case is a Qualcomm RFIC that supports IEEE 802.11ax. That's the Wi-Fi 6 standard and multi-user, multi-input, multiple output RF connections. So let's flip this over and see what's on the back side. We've got another big metal case that was connected to the one on the front, so we'll get that off. Underneath it, we got some thermal paste on top of this big EMI case. You'll see there was a large component here, put this back on here, that was coming through the case. It's just because it's too tall. They want to get this metal plate down as close as possible for e-transfer. And then we'll pry off the, the metal EMI case to see what's underneath. Uh, surprisingly, the answer is not much. So there was just some thermal paste that was carrying heat away from the back of the PCB. There's a bunch of small components, some passives, and, but no major IC like we saw in the front. This is just helping to carry heat in two directions. You know, that processor is generating a lot of heat, and therefore they're trying to take heat away on both sides of the PCB. Because this is a much more advanced processor. As we talked about in the beginning, it uses more current, more power, and therefore there's more heat to take away. As we compare then, the Wi-Fi 5 and the Wi-Fi 6 router, we did see a lot of things that were very similar. This tech teardown comparison was really interesting to me because there is a good chance you were watching this video using a Wi-Fi connection through a router quite similar to one of these. Despite the same basic objectives, wireless communication using the Wi-Fi protocol at both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, the designs and capabilities are quite different. The most obvious being the size, right? And then the number of antennas, and then some really huge heavy heat sinks inside this Wi-Fi 6 router to take away all that extra power. But I think I was most struck by the fact that inside those six antenna housings, we found three different antenna designs. I don't think I expected that. Not only is it three different designs, they're fabricated on three different substrates, one of which had no dielectric over the antenna metal at all. There were two different antenna feed points. We had several at the end and one in the middle and two types of RF connections to the PCBs, solder and the miniature RF connectors. It's really a reminder to me that RF design is complex and maybe still a little like magic. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tech Teardown sponsored by Mauser Electronics as we give you an engineer's look inside interesting electronics products. For your next electronics project, I would encourage you to head over to mauser.com where you can find a lot of helpful design and engineering resources. These include a bomb tool, ECAD design library, project manager, data sheets, and much more. And I hope you join me again for the next Tech Teardown. <laughs>